did, there is another research by uh, Rudy et al. in radiology in 2019, and they have been using the multimodal MRI data. And uh, we've been more focusing on the clinical data, but, but Rudy uh, and colleagues were, were more discussing on the, 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 like an imaging data. And they have been using deep learning segmentation for segmented tumors. They have been doing the volumetric uh, analysis, uh, voxel-based morphometry histogram of the special features of the tumor. And they put all those things into a comprehensive deep learning model. And based on that, there will be, there were, they, they had this predictive model in the right side of the slide, you can see that there's a cross correlation between the imaging findings and the molecular genetics and also neurochemical findings, including the positive or negative status for IDH mutation, positive or negative status for MDH, MGMT methylation status, and also a positive or negative status for 1P, uh, uh, 1P19Q uh, code deletion and EGFR mutation. <clears throat> so, I'm sorry. So uh, based on this molecular and clinical and imaging data, we can expect that some kind of, you know, uh, like surveillance or pr uh, prognosis outcome would be expected. And this is like a self-correcting mach uh, machine learning model as, as, we, as we concurred before. So this kind of sort of, you know, back and forth feed and receive information. So within the feed forward feedback system, it's going to recorrect itself and verify itself and to uh, mitigate all the flaws. And by that, uh, that's gonna be an intelligent system by time. And we would have a better and better and better positive predictive value and negative predictive value. So by that, the specificity and also sensitivity of how the model is gonna increase by time. Also, when they, they found the, the outcome analysis and longitudinal data, it turns out that when we uh, see positive emergence of lesions in the follow-up MRI in the brain tumors, sometimes that is not really the progression of the tumor tissue. It's not the progression or relapse of the tumor. Uh, it might be the vasculature uh, issues. It might be uh, some kind of oozing of the blood uh, from the vascular tissue because of the necrosis and also damage that the tumor macro, micro environment has received from the radiotherapy side effects. So the radiotherapy, the RT and chemotherapy using kind of like anti-cancer uh, uh, medications for brain tumors of gliomas, including temozolomide, for example, together with RT or radiotherapy, that's going to kind of damage the microvasculature. So by that, We'll see lesions that the physician would say, wow, I have progression. So I need to stop the therapy. <clears throat> uh, it didn't work. But the fact of the matter is that this is not progression. This is pseudo progression. So in case we're talking about true progression, pseudo progression and the mixed response and the decision, a clinical decision that the doctor is going to take before pursuing, maybe stopping the medication, increasing the dose, decreasing the dose of the RT or chemotherapy, that all depends on these kind of things. But sometimes uh, we, we gotta be more uh, precise than having like a guess, clinical guess. Okay, clinical guess is good because we gotta have a clinical discretion, but that is not really digital. That is not, not, not really precise. So when we have a bunch of data that it's feeding its pre precision by time and we have a good level of prediction, we can use imaging data, use the AI-based virtual biopsy, which is an interesting term. Sorry. And by that, we can uh, 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 just make uh, an educated guess and also a machine learning uh, base uh, decision on the concurrence uh, of uh, clinical and also imaging data in terms of a true mixed or pseudo progression. Based on that, the clinical decision would be 
made uh, accordingly either to continue treatment or to to change the treatment or to stop treatment and to conclude <coughs> what these kind of things why i brought brain tumor model as a as an example here for two reasons uh, although we've been doing some ai uh, and machine learning uh, research on parkinson disease alzheimer's disease and also on uh, autism spectrum disorder and ADHD together with the brilliant team of prof Professor uh, Prashan uh, and, and our colleagues in uh, uh, the, their institute in NGR in India Tech. Um, we have been working on brain tumor and I, and I showed you one research that we have already published on brain tumor. This is just an example, so definitely the extent of the application for AI machine learning in medical and neuroscience, clinical neuroscience perspective is diverse. But we've just chosen this because uh, first, we, we had the experience of doing research on that. Second, uh, that's, that's pretty defining. So this is about overall survival. This is about uh, quality of life. This is about neurological symptoms arising from a devastating tumor in the brain, which is which is high grade glioma. So that's really something, and it's going to change the paradigm of uh, the quality of life of people afflicted with brain tumors, including glioma, uh, specifically high grade gliomas or GBM, if you like. Uh, so to wrap up, uh, uh, we have had the concurrence of uh, the importance of brain lesion detection analysis and recommendation systems. Uh, using the neural network and machine learning based systems to kind of, uh, you know, uh, to predict the, the grade of the tumor and also the this risk or probability for metastasis. And based on that, to recommend uh, further imaging if needed. So this is like a probabilistic evaluation system for uh, for coming up with the, with the subsequent recommendations. Do we need to do DTI? Do we need to do a spectroscopy or perfusion, uh, perfusion, diffusion, MR images, laboratory tests? And by that, uh, we will be using, again, we will be using this after all the imaging data sets uh, being used. We're going to even further apply this uh, data and biological data uh, to, uh, towards personalized glioma prediction and treatment recommendation systems. And based on that, we'll just go for precision therapeutics. And that is exactly what we are referring to when we discussed about, when we discuss about the precision medicine, all right? So precision medicine or personalized medicine is uh, one of the main pillars of the P4 medicine, if you appreciate it, appreciate that. Sorry. Uh, the P4 medicine stands for predictive medicine, preventive medicine, participatory, I'm sorry, uh, uh, precision medicine, and last, participatory medicine. So there are four Ps, predictive, preventive, precision, or personalized medicine, and last but not least, participatory medicine. So the third P is personalized medicine or precision medicine, a super exact approach we're going to take when we're given medications, when we're given treatments, we go for diagnostic measures and we're going to follow up the treatment response. So towards the precision medicine, we need to use data. We need to use cellular, molecular, clinical, electrophysiological imaging data when it comes to neuroscience research, when it comes to medical science, and we're already doing this kind of stuff. And uh, if we do not do that, instead of P4, we'll go for O4 medicine, which is <laughs> the first O is over diagnosis, over testing, over treating, and over charging. So let's go P4 rather than O4. And I really appreciate uh, your presence here. Thank you for being here. And thank you for patiently listening to my presentation today. Thanks. Hope that makes sense to you. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your knowledge on Absolutely. AI and machine learning.